We're here today with Patrick, the mm -hmm. chief scientist at Loop AI, and it's great to meet you. I've been following Loop for a little while here and trying to get up to speed. One of the things that um, kind of interested me in starting to research the whole machine learning area, there's so many companies out there right now that are struggling to differentiate themselves, mm. but you seem to have taken a, a pretty cool approach. Can you take us through it a little bit in terms of what the company is doing, what you're offering at this point? Sure, sure. So our, our aim is to do uh, what we call human capacity cognitive computing. Uh, and by human capacity, I'm sort of singling out the things that make the human communication system distinct from what you might see in the animal kingdom and that kind of thing. Uh, and so humans are have a facility with three different things that you don't typically see in other communication systems, and that's multimodal communication. Okay. Meaning we can use our hands and gestures, and yep. you know, I could take a broom handle and have it mean something in a conversation mm -hmm. that uh, could substitute for a verbal symbol or something like that. So we're very good at that. Um, we also have this facility with symbol recursion, where we're, we're able to take uh, a symbol and fold it into a function and take the output of that function and fold it into another function, which gives us a very rich and complex sort of syntactic capability and also semantic capability. Um, and you don't see this anywhere else in the, in the animal kingdom. And because of that, we have what's called sort of uh, the, the uh, what they call discrete infinity, uh, which is just the finite use, uh, the, or the infinite use of finite means, right? So we only have the letters A through Z and uh, you know, a certain number of words in our vocabularies, and yet we have an infinite number of possible generations that, mm -hmm. that we can make out of that. So um, the thing with machines is um, you know, machines generally use sort of a finite use of finite means. Um, and what we're trying to do is break machines out of the confines of that they have currently with language understanding systems and introduce these multimodal and recursive systems into a cognitive computing platform that'll be able to understand language the way that we do. We approach it using uh, deep learning and then a number of other techniques that we'd sort of developed over, over time. Um, Bart Peitner, the CTO, and I worked together on some very big artificial intelligence projects uh, sponsored by DARPA and ONR and um, another number of these sort of you know big organization projects that where a lot of effort and a lot of team work go into it and these are sort of like you know they're equivalent to like the the human genome project of artificial intelligence yep. and so when we started doing what we were doing here we were kind of looking at all of the other things that we could do and what other people were doing and we really wanted to take as opposed to the human genome project sort of this Craig Venter approach of let's see how we can streamline things down and get the same amount of bang as you would get from these large projects, but with a lot less buck. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started doing research in 2012 and really thinking about these things. And over the past couple of years, uh, developed this cognitive computing platform that we're using now. Mm -hmm. We focus on shining light on what we call dark data. Okay, yep. And there are lots of companies out there that have this dark data. You have uh, you know, documents, financial documents or corporate documents or whatever. You've got emails from people in and out of the company. You've got customer support forums and emails and tickets and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, there's lots of language and text data out there that companies have, and they know that there's good stuff in right. there, but either you've got to pay somebody to read it uh, or you have to use some kind of natural language processing approach that is going to try to understand the nature of what's going on in your mm -hmm. data. Um, or it just has to remain dark. And so what we try to do is to take that data and to provide a structured representation of that data that you can then hand to your data science team and have them use that for, for the things that they want to do. Um, so the thing that distinguishes us is the fact that we're really able to understand that data within its own context. Okay. okay, so a lot of natural language processing techniques start with some model of the world and of a particular language. They make a bunch of assumptions about what things are supposed to mean in the context yep. of that data. Um, and then they try to get at what you're getting at, but starting from all those assumptions. 
our system starts from scratch and it doesn't start with any assumptions about what your data looks like. It doesn't even make assumptions about what language you're using because there are companies out there that have documents that switch quickly from one language to another. It might go from English to Tagalog and back again in the middle of a sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to make assumptions about what language that's in or what language you expect it to go into. You want to have a, a system that can actually just learn that kind of thing as it's going along. Um, and so, so that's the real distinguishing factor with us is we have something that is language independent and that doesn't depend on certain assumptions that you would make about the data. Um, the other side of this is that uh, because we don't make these assumptions, we do need a lot more data than you might need if you mm -hmm. were using natural language processing. So the, um, the, the companies that we're te we tend to be working with right now are Fortune 1000 companies that already have a lot of this data. Um, and we can bring them a system and say, put this in your data center. We have a GPU appliance that people can uh, rent from us and put in their, in their data center. And then they plug in their own data, hopefully lots of data, and mm -hmm. from that begin to learn about what's in that data. Okay. So when we first started, um, we kind of thought that we would do a cloud-based approach, uh, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps have our own farm of GPU servers um, that would sort of do all the distributed processing and people could just feed their data into yep. it. Uh, but when we got out there into the market, we discovered that um, there are lots of these larger companies that have a lot of this data and they really want to know what's in it, but they do not want to send it into the cloud. Um, they would rather keep that data in their own data centers. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, we started talking with NVIDIA and we got a partnership going yep. with them where uh, we have a GPU sort of appliance solution that we can just provide to people at will. You know, they license it and can keep it on site for as long as they need to use it. Your technical approach in terms of the way you're handling language processing, not as you know a traditional NLP. What's what's the unit that gets right? Analyzed? So because if so you're mixing this, languages, that's well, cool. This kind of harkens back to our what we were talking about at the beginning about the human capacity understanding, yeah. and that you have to have this recursive system, mm -hmm. uh, which means symbols are going to be folded in with other symbols. Right. So uh, you might have certain atomic elements, but at the most part, what's kind of going into your representational space might be of, you know, at different levels of, of the hierarchy. Okay. Um, and the main idea here <clears throat> is for us to be able to kind of learn things as data is coming in, mm -hmm. you know, as the system is going along. I like to think of it like, let's say that you don't know anything about gardening Mm -hmm. You decide that you want to learn about it, so you pick up a book or you order one on Amazon, mm -hmm. and you start reading. And as you're going through, certain concepts are presenting themselves to you. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, uh, you might not be able to distinguish those concepts to you very well. You know, a, mm -hmm. an evergreen is an evergreen, but you don't know the difference between a fir and a conifer and that kind of thing. But as you acquire more information, right. these distinctions become more clear to you. Uh, you're able to separate out concepts and the space gets larger mm -hmm. and things become separated in that space. Um, so, so that's how more or less sort of a high level view of how it's done. One of the distinguishing features of this approach is that as more data comes in, mm -hmm. um, it's learning and sort of changing its ideas about you know what yep. the world is um, yeah. and what things mean in that world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for example, there was a time when uh, TVs didn't have Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and you know, if you were just analyzing you know consumer electronics data, and suddenly TVs and Wi-Fi start to be talked about within the same context, right. you slowly learn that Wi-Fi can now be a feature of televisions. Yep. Okay. Um, and so that's the approach that we have of learning with the world as it changes, changing that model you know, mm -hmm. as things change. Um, and a, another important aspect of this is it's doing it in an unsupervised way. So you don't have people coming in and uh, making labels, going through all the labor of saying right. like, all right, we want to label this as a television given these features and, and that sort of thing. Um, so, so those are sort of two big selling points for us is the fact that it's unsupervised. Mm -hmm. uh, we've streamlined sort of this whole process. We don't have to have six months, 12 months of lead time and annotation and consulting with experts and right. that sort of thing. Well, thank you for joining us. And well, thank you. I it's look been forward a pleasure. To, yeah, I look forward to hearing more. Me too. Mm -hmm.